Hello and welcome. My name is Anuska. Thank you so much for joining me on this Facebook Live or if you're listening to the replay. It's great to have you here, wherever you are in the world, wherever you're listening from. So if you rely on your voice for your work or career, which let's face it, most people do in some shape or form, whether you are someone that does a lot of pitching or coaching, interviewing, um, presenting, uh, what else, training people, then you're going to find these videos really beneficial. I've got four mini videos coming up over the next four weeks, which I really hope are going to give you a lot of things to think about in terms of using your voice to its fullest capacity. So just quickly, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anuska Taylor. I have been training singers and speakers for over a decade to find the full potential of their speaking, uh, well, their speaking or their singing voice actually, um, and helping them to find that unique voice that we all have. And I work with people both in a sort of technical capacity, but also I look at the sort of voice psychology as well, which just gives you a much deeper understanding of what's going on. So over the next four weeks, we're going to be looking at articulation. And this is really, if you don't know what that really means, it's the process by which we form sounds and words. And why learning to fully and intentionally articulate is going to make your speaking much more effortless, clear and powerful without a lot of physical effort on your part. Maybe a little bit of mental effort to start with, but much less physical effort. So fully articulating your words will not only make it easier for other people to understand you, so clear addiction, um, improve clarity, but also it's going to help to amplify and enhance your sound. So you're going to have a richer, fuller tone to your voice, but you're also going to find that your voice will just project much more naturally without having to really push it to be heard. So in order to articulate, we must use what we call our articulators. Now, if you don't know what an articulator is, in terms of the voice anyway, it's, I'll just name them for you. So we have the jaw, the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the hard palate, up here, the soft palate, which is behind the hard palate, and also the gum ridge here, or the alveolar ridge. So these are all what we would call the articulators. Now, what these articulators do is they actually change the shape of the vocal tract. So I'm just throwing loads of words at you at the moment. The vocal tract is essentially the tube that runs from the larynx or the voice box. So as a man, you have an Adam's apple. But as a woman, if you just put your fingers on your throat and speak, you'll feel your larynx kind of bobbing up and down. So it really runs from there to your lips. And it's just this tube. So the articulators actually change the shape of this tube to create totally different sounds that we use in speech. Well, and singing, but we're talking about speech today. So just as an example, just to show you how this works, if you were to say the vowel E, E, and then you were to say the vowel R, E, R, E, R, E, R, it's really predominantly the tongue that's moving, that's changing that sound. So the, it's really, just play around with it. If you just do an E-R, 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 it's really just the tongue that's moving. So you can just see very simply how the vocal tract can be changed just by really focusing on one articulator. But as mentioned in the intro as well, I also like to look at the voice psychology and the psychological aspect of using our voice, which I often think gets overlooked. And so um, I work more than just technically with people because I think it's a really important aspect of really getting much more profound results with your voice. So of course our voice speaks volumes about us and we are communicating with our voice what we're feeling and thinking, both consciously and unconsciously. And so the challenges you face with your voice are often representative of the challenges you face 
in your life in other areas. So there's this really powerful link, which is why I think working on the voice is so fascinating. So of course, articulation is the key to expressing yourself and being fully heard and expressing your thoughts and feelings clearly and powerfully and confidently. And this is a very vulnerable place for many people. I would say most people, um, you know, really fully expressing themselves is very vulnerable. And so it's no surprise then that for a lot of people, they don't fully and intentionally articulate. And because it's a very exposing thing to do. So at the most extreme case of not articulating is the mumbling. And uh, I'm sure we all know people that mumble and it's just incredibly hard to hear them and follow them. So it's important to become aware of your mindset around your voice and your mindset around expression and self-expression, um, particularly as you start to work on your articulators because your mind will ultimately drive your vocal results. So I've just got to, before we start looking at the first articulator today, which is the jaw, I've just got a couple of questions that you can start to think about, journal about, um, but try not to kind of overthink it, just sort of let ideas and thoughts just sort of naturally float in. So first of all, and I will actually post these at the bottom as well of the video. So what is the benefit of me not fully expressing myself? What do I avoid and how does it protect me? This may seem like a really strange question, but often we don't think about our voice in this way, but it is protecting us in some way when we're not fully using it. So for example, it could be in a work situation that you know, you, you avoid sharing your ideas and it could be that that protects you from being criticized or judged or, you know, you're trying to avoid maybe being, feeling humiliated or looking stupid. The next question that you can ask yourself as well is how does this limit my life? Which is a really powerful question to ask. And again, a question I don't think we ask ourselves enough. So when you aren't fully expressing yourself, how is it limiting you? And if we take the work scenario, it could be then that you're not taken seriously at work. It could be that you're then not up for promotions and you're not progressing in your career. You're staying safe, you're staying in your comfort zone in a job that you know really well, and you're not really living to your fullest potential. So they aren't necessarily the answers to the questions, but these are just some ideas that you can start to think about. Um, and they will start to kind of, hopefully just start to untap some things that might not be conscious to you at the moment about your voice, but it's really just about becoming aware versus trying to fix problems. Um, and then you can make conscious choices about how you use your voice versus using your voice on autopilot. Oh, thank you, Anthony. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just in my spiel mode at the moment. So, but we're gonna look at the jaw now. And the lack of movement in the jaw can significantly impact articulation. Now, this is particularly true with singers, but it's also true to some extent with speakers as well. And again, coming back to the mindset around using our voice, this is really important with the jaw because the jaw is notorious for holding tension in, I'd say, most people and um, including myself. And so particularly when we're stressed, when we're worried, when we're anxious, and also when we're angry, we hold a lot of tension in our jaw. Now, often people don't realize that their jaw is tight until they start trying to open it. Because if you're just used to your jaw just being clamped shut all the time, and you've just found a way of moving your jaw or not moving your jaw, then you might not even particularly be aware that it's a problem because of this emotional component that I sort of spoken about briefly a minute ago. So how many of you know that you hold tension in your jaw? And I absolutely do myself. I have to do a lot of work on this myself. So I'm talking from experience here. Do you grind your teeth at night? 
does your jaw ache when you leave it open? You know, so if you're at the dentist, and I struggle with this too, my jaw always really aches if I have to be in the dentist chair for more than about five minutes. Um, does your jaw crack when you yawn? So these are all signs of tension in the jaw. Now, just in terms of the jaw, very briefly, the jaw is a single bone. I think some people think it's, it's, there's jaws, but we have not like jaws the shark, but jaws. Um, but we have one single bone which comprises the jaw. And it's connected to the skull by the TMJ. And the TMJ um, is actually situated just in front of the ears here. So it starts up here, and this is what connects the jaw bone to the skull. Now, the primary function of the jaw is for chewing and grinding food. And the chewing and grinding food muscles for, of the jaw are located in two locations. So we have muscles here called the temporalis or the temple area. So just sort of next to your eyes. And then around, if you actually um, hold your teeth together, and tense, you'll feel a bulge here, and this is called the masseter. So there's these two muscles sort of here and here, and these are the main muscles for chewing and grinding. Now, these muscles get very, very overused, and they get very, very tight in most people, because these muscles are actually very, very strong relative to their size, so they get very overworked. Now, these muscles also are responsible for closing the jaw, which is interesting. So these are the muscles you actually want to kind of try and release to help you open the jaw, which we're going to come to at the end. I'm going to give you some exercises you can do to release your jaw. Now, there's also some more muscles. There's a lot going on with the jaw. It's a fascinating part of our anatomy. We've also got muscles underneath our chin so here and these are called digastric muscles and we have jaw muscles here too now the digastric muscles actually originate from behind the ear and then they come oh, I'm trying to work out which way to go and then they come around in the sling motion uh, sling direction to the front here so um so from behind the ears to about here if you can see and these muscles are responsible for opening the jaw, the ones underneath. And then the ones here are responsible for closing the jaw. So the muscles underneath are indirectly connected to many parts of our body, including the skull, including the rest of the jaw, including the larynx or the voice box, and including the sternum. So, if these muscles become tight, it has a knock-on effect to other muscles. So hopefully you can start to see that the jaw is not just this. It's actually kind of all of this and right down here. I mean, it's actually vast. Um, and it's operating within a much wider body system than I think many people realize. So I think when we think of our jaw, we just think of that bit. You can't really isolate it. There's so many things that are going to affect your jaw. So to truly get freedom in our jaw, we have to get the head balanced properly. And this, I think, can be quite tricky for people who aren't great, don't have great alignment, don't have great posture. Your head alignment is going to affect your jaw. Um, you need freedom in your neck and your trunk area as well. Um, and so that the jaw and the throat can be released. So if we're looking for alignment, I'm just gonna give you a few pointers because it's kind of a bit tricky without standing in front of you, but you want to think about your head sort of floating on top of your body versus poking your chin poking forward or poking up or poking back. You want to think about your neck being long versus being shortened at the back. So a long neck, and you almost want to go more towards a double chin than, um, than poking your chin forward or down. You want your shoulders back and down and your chest open. Now, for many of us, again, I'm guilty of this as everyone else, 
we live in a world where we're sitting down a lot, whether it's at a desk or we're driving or in my case, sitting at a piano. And so we end up in this kind of hunched, rounded shoulders, poking chin forward, collapsing the chest, all the things that are really gonna hinder this free movement of the jaw and the throat, and obviously ultimately the voice and the breath. So for speaking, the jaw doesn't need to open that wide. Um, it's different for singers, but for speakers, you just want a soft jaw that is moving versus, you know, it doesn't, you don't need to have that kind of scream mask thing going on. It can just be a very soft jaw. You really just don't want it to be gripping and tensing. So um, this is going to allow for that free movement of the jaw and that more effortless articulation and also helps to avoid that sort of tension in the throat. So remembering that everything's kind of interconnected. So you can't sort of separate the jaw from the voice from the chest. It's you kind of have to see it all as one and it has a sort of domino effect on everything else. So if I was to demonstrate what it might sound like with a tense jaw and then demonstrate without a tense jaw, just so you can hear a difference. And I'm going to exaggerate it, obviously, but I've just got a sentence here. So my brother got me a new bag for my birthday. My brother got me a new bag for my birthday. So I'm kind of gripping my jaw there. Now, if I was to open my jaw and say the same sentence, my brother got me a new bag for my birthday. So hopefully you can hear quite a big difference, both in terms of the quality of the sound, the, the fact that it projects more easily, but also from my perspective, it just feels so much easier. Like it feels really uncomfortable when I talk like this. Um, but you would be surprised how many people do speak like that, but I think they're just used to that tension. So they don't know what it actually feels like to feel that release in their jaw and ultimately their voice. So here's a few things you can try at home. So first of all, you want to make sure you've got that sort of um, head, neck, shoulder, chest alignment. So you're not stooped, you're not poking forward, you're not doing anything kind of weird with your body. Everything's kind of, the head's just floating on top of the body like a lollipop or like a helium balloon and um, your chest is open, your shoulders are back. Now then, one of the things you can do first of all, because these are the muscles that are going to hinder you opening your jaw, the ones around the temple area and the ones here. So we're gonna just first of all give them a quick massage. So in very sort of gentle circular motions, you can just give them a quick massage and very gently just open and close your jaw and then the same with this muscle here and then you can go the other way i'm just speeding this up <laughs> but you can spend a lot more time but let's spend at least 10 seconds on each and go in both directions so now again you don't need to go just very softly moving it And press firmly, not like so you're in pain, but press firmly so you can feel the muscles getting a bit of a massage. Then, because we've got muscles under here as well, we want to massage under the chin too. And you can just use like a, a knuckle. Now, you probably notice I've just poked my chin, uh, my tongue out a little bit. Because there's lots of, there's a lot going on under here, including the tongue muscles. So you want to try and keep the tongue out of the way as much as possible. So a lot of people have a tendency to retract their tongue when they speak, which is just gonna create more tension under here. So what you want to do is actually just try and keep it relaxed. And one of the easiest ways is to have the tip of the tongue against the bottom lips. And actually play around with it, because if you pull your tongue back, it will feel kind of hard under here. So it won't feel particularly nice. So keep the tongue forward and relaxed as much as possible. Now then finally, what you can practice with is just giving yourself a massage while talking. So keeping the massage quite firm and just talking as you would normally. 
Now this does two things, because firstly we are prompting the jaw muscle here, the masseter, to relax, but also we're reminding ourselves to actually open the jaw slightly. So we're not like this. So we're just keeping it nice and soft. Now you can also do it up here as well, remembering that the jaw is kind of all of this. Um, but speak at the same time and see if it makes, actually you could do them both at the same time, <laughs> but maybe just do one at a time, that might be better. Um, as I say, many people, I work with so many people that don't even realize that they don't open their jaw and um, they don't realize their jaw is tense because they're just so used to not opening it. So they don't even have any real feedback of it. And then it's only when you start working with them and trying to get them to start opening their jaw, they're like, oh, that actually really hurts or it's really uncomfortable or um, they think they're opening the jaw, but they're not. So another thing you can do as well while you're doing this is to practice in front of a mirror. So you can actually make sure you are actually moving your jaw. Um, because if you're not used to it, it's going to probably be a little bit weird to start with, but I promise you it will make such a difference on so many levels to your voice function. Um, but as, as we're talking about articulation here, it's going to make articulating and using your jaw so much easier. But it's also, as you can see, it's got a knock on effect to so many other parts of the body as well. So I hope that, that these are just a little quick videos that I'm doing so I hope that that's giving you some things to think about if you have any questions please feel free to post them and I will um, answer them either underneath or I can answer them in the next video so next week we're going to look at the tongue which is probably the most important articulator that we have so um, if that's going to be very interesting because I think many of us don't really know much about our tongue <laughs> So anyway, I look forward to seeing you same time next week. And yes, feel free to ask me any questions in the meantime. Thank you for joining me.